Hello Grade 1s, welcome to this maths lesson brought to you by Worksheet Cloud. I'm so glad to have you here with me today. We're going to do some wonderful maths. And if you have any questions while I'm teaching, you can ask your mum or dad to send an email to grade1 at worksheetcloud.com and I'll do my best to answer those questions in the next lesson. Right, let's get started. This is a grade one lesson, and today we'll be talking about empty box sums. Before we start, let's do our exercises. In maths, that's some counting. It's always good to get our brains going, and we love to do that with counting. So, let's start at two and count in twos. Do you think you can do that? That's skipping over. It's called, some people call it skip counting. Okay, number two. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-eight, thirty. Well done. How about we count in fives? That means five plus five plus five. So we're starting at five. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Did you get that? It's like a little pattern. All the numbers in the 5 column and the 10 column. Let's try again. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Very good. Okay, let's count backwards from 20. We're starting at 20 and we're going backwards the numbers are getting smaller 20 19 18 17 16 15 14 13 12 11 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 very good okay this is a number line. It's helpful to have a number line in your head. So when you're thinking of sums, you picture this number line in your head. Now I want you to find the number three. Can you see it? Okay. Tell me what number comes before three. Before you got to three, what number comes before three? Two. Right. Find number three with your eyes again. What number comes before? after three four very good okay let's have a look at the numbers again let's find number seven with your eyes number seven what number comes before seven six what number comes after seven eight very good well done Okay, read some number names. This is also good exercise for our maths. We must be able to read all our number names up to 10. Let's try. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Very good. Right, last time on our previous lesson we did doubling and halving. So do you remember this? Half of four. We've got some twins over here. They need the same amount of cupcakes each. We've got four in total. So if you chop it in half, how many do they each get? One, two. Good, so half of four is two. Great. Then we also did double. Double means the small dog gets two, the big dog gets two plus two. That's double. So double two is two plus another two. One, two, three, four. Four. Double two is four. And remember we discussed that there's a little pattern. If you remember this, if you know this can really help you a lot. So Double one is, we say in our heads, one plus one, that's two. Half of two is, if we chop two cupcakes in half, one. 
And did you notice that pattern again? Double two is four. So half of four is two. Great. Double three is six. Half of six is three. Very good. Double four is eight. Oh, there, what's happening? Let's see. Ah, double four is eight. Half of eight is four. Double five is ten. Half of ten is five. Very good. Now we're all warmed up. Now we're going to talk about empty box sums. We did this in a previous exercise and we're going to use it slightly differently today. Teachers love to give empty box sums. That means the missing number isn't on this side of the equal sign, it's on this side and it really makes us think. Today I'm going to teach you two different ways to find this answer. All of our brains work differently. So you can choose at the end of this lesson the way that helps your brain the most and that's going to be the key to doing these empty box sums. Okay, so this is way number one. And we've already studied this in a very detailed way in a different lesson. Okay, let me remind you, this is hotel number six. On every floor, you can only have six guests. There's only enough hot water for six guests. So the manager has booked one guest onto this side. How many guests can you book in this room? And we said, remember, the answer was five. So we know one plus five equals six. And if we just picture those two hotel rooms, it's going to help us remember how to get to the answer. So let's look at the next um, one. Something plus four equals six. Now we see those sums in our books at school and we think, oh, I don't know what's going on. Something plus four equals six. How must I know what the something is? Well, think back to your hotel. You've got you don't have anyone booked into that room yet. You've only got four booked into this room. So how many more guests can we have? We've got four, five, six. That's two more. So that's the something. That's all that those bo empty box sums mean. Okay, let's try again. Three guests in this room. How many in this room? Another three makes six. See, the answer is six. Two plus what equals six? Right, four. So when if this is a, if this helps your brain, whenever you see an empty box sum, I want you to imagine the hotel and the number after the equal sign, that's how many guests. It won't always be six, it might be another number, but that's fine. It's exactly the same. So there we've got one plus five equals six. And six plus how many equals six? Oh, and teachers love these as well. Six guests in this room. How many more can we book in? No more. We've already got six. Okay. So we have to say naught. No more. Six plus naught equals six. Just when we're getting really confused and thinking, no, I don't understand, teacher. Then we remember the hotel and we think six plus. No more guests. That's fine. It's an empty room. Six plus naught. Okay, that's way number one. Now I'm going to show you a way to think of it, number two. I'm going to move my video down here so you can see nicely. Okay, we can think of it like a scale. Here we've got a scale, and the middle bit is the equal sign. So look at our sum. We've got a sum on this side, that's the one basket, and the sum on the other side, a number, number six, and that's the other basket. And the equal sign is reminding us that the two sides must balance. Okay, that's the important thing with the scale, they must balance. So we've got four blocks on this side. And we've got, on the other side of the equals, six blocks on this side. Have a closer look at this scale. Is it balancing? Oh, no, it's not. It's wobbling. Because there are only four on this side, but there are six on the other side. Now, what can we add to this side to make it the same? And you see there's six on the side and only four. Five, six. 
That's right, another two blocks, now it balances. And so that's how you can think of these empty box sums as well. Four blocks plus how many more will get me to six? And we've seen that the answer is two. Easy peasy. Let's do another one. Okay, we've got three on this side. It must equal six. They must be the same. But they're not. Oh, it's not balanced. So, empty box sum. Something plus three equals six. How many blocks must we add to these three to equal six? Well, you know your double and half, that would help you as well. Three more, because three plus three is six. So, how much plus three is six? Three, now they balance. Six on each side. See, the equal sign is the middle of the scale. Okay, last one. Three plus three equals, and we like these sums because we've seen them from right from the beginning when we started doing math. So this doesn't normally worry us at all if the empty box is after the equal sign. We're quite good at those. Three plus three. Is this scale even? No, there's nothing in this side. How many shall we add? Oh, I've got to put a whole nother six in there. Hey, now they balance. And we know these sums, they don't normally worry us. 3 plus 3 equals 6. We can use an abacus, we can use a number line, we can even use our fingers, and we can normally get those ones quite chop chop, and it's 6. Okay, now we're going to try some of these without all my funny drawings. And I want you to think in your head whichever way is easiest for you. What plus 5 equals 6? One. Did you get that right? Which method did you use? The hotel way of thinking or the scale way of thinking? Let's try another. Two plus equals six. Four. That's right. Two plus four equals six. Three plus equals six. 3 plus 3 equals 6. Very good. Let's do a little story sum to end off. I lost 6 of my shoes. Oh dear. I found 2. That's good news. How many shoes do I still need to find? Okay, I've lost 6, so I've got to have 6 on the one side of my sum. I found 2. Great. How many more do I still need to find? That's what we don't know. So that's our empty box. So we've got two plus how many will give us all of our six shoes? And the answer is four. Well done, you're so good at these now. Two plus four equals six. How many shoes do I still need to find? Four. Great. So you've learned a method where there are there's a balancing scale and the equal sign is in the middle. Or you've learned one with the hotel where we balance out six on every floor. And those are two wonderful ways of thinking and you can choose either one. So when you see an empty box sum, you're going to be excited and not worried because now you've got two tricks in your toolbox and you can use either one that helps your brain the most. Okay. Wow, you smashed it today. You did so well. I'm so impressed. I hope you enjoyed this maths lesson brought to you by Worksheet Cloud. And I hope I'll see you again tomorrow. In the meantime, download that maths activity that I've prepared for you and enjoy doing that this afternoon. Have a lovely day.